And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Euhelopus, which was a request from Morgan via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Euhelopus was a sauropod that lived in the early Cretaceous in what is now Shandong Province, China, in the Mengying Formation. It was large, it walked on all fours, it had longer forelimbs than hind limbs. It had a long neck, and it looked similar to Mementosaurus, but they're not that closely related. It's actually more closely related to Titanosaurs. Mm-hmm. When you say it looks similar to Mementosaurus, the only thing that means to me is that it had a really long neck. It did have a long neck. <laughs> <laughs> its skull looked similar to Camarasaurus, but it also had some similarities to Mementosaurus. Its neck was about 13 feet or 4 meters long, and it had 17 neck vertebrae. And it had air sacs in the neck, similar to titanosauriforms and some mementosaurids. If its neck is only 13 feet long, I'm not super impressed. Well, there is an, one mementosaurus with an f- almost 50 foot long neck. So, yeah. But other mementosaurs have shorter necks. That's true. Fair point. Yeah. Oh, and uh, being like the chimerosaurus skull, it had the box-like shape. It also had large nostrils and pencil-like teeth. It probably ate hardy vegetation. There's been different size estimates on Euhelopus. At one time, it was thought to be up to 49 feet or 15 meters long. So the whole body as long as that one mementosaurus neck. Mm -hmm. And weighs 17 to 22 tons. Later, it was thought to be about 36 feet or 11 meters long and weigh close to four tons. And there's another estimate that it was about six and a half tons. And then a later estimate that said it weighed almost four tons. Wow. So it's all over. As usual, they shrink. The first estimates are very grand, like, oh, it might be huge. And then over time, it's like, eh, maybe it was a little smaller. Yeah. (laughs) It's the first dinosaur to be named and described from China. So that's cool. Wow. Yeah. That is quite a claim to fame. Yeah, because there are so many dinosaurs (laughs) now named from China. Yeah. (laughs) They found a partial skeleton that included a relatively complete skull and lower jaws, vertebrae, the left thigh bone, part of the shoulder, and then there was another skeleton that included vertebrae, a nearly complete pelvis, and right leg. Well, it's really cool that they found a relatively complete skull. That's extremely rare. Yes. There's unique features in details in the neck vertebrae. It's got divided or forked neural spines on the back of the neck and front of the back, and it has air sacs in the ilium, the upper half of the pelvis. Hmm. The fossils were first found in 1913 by a Catholic priest, Father Mertens. He showed some of the bones to Gustav Behagel, a German mining engineer in 1916, who then sent three vertebrae to Ding Wenjiang, or VK Ting, the head of the Geological Survey of China. And then the fossil site was rediscovered in 1922. In 1923, two skeletons were excavated, and H.C. Ta'an studied the holotype. Originally, it was named as Helipus in 1929 by Carl Wyman, and that means marsh foot. That name refers to the marshy area where the fossils were found, as well as to Truga, Swedish swamp shoes that Wyman said looked like the wide feet of the dinosaur. Hmm. But it turns out that that name Helipus was already used for a bird that was named in 1832. So in 1956, Alfred Romer renamed it Euhelipus. And that genus name means true marshfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Marshfoot's taken. We're going to name it true marshfoot. It's the real one. Yeah. It's like the band Better Than Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't know if there was a band Ezra, but I think there might have been. There might. It seems likely. Mm-hmm. Now, there is a grass or plant with the same name, Euhelopus, but since it's a plant, Euhelopus can also be the name of a dinosaur or animal. Yeah. That's the only time you get to reuse a genus name as if it's in a completely different kingdom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the type species is Euhelopus zedanskii. The species name is in honor of Zedansky. Zedansky didn't finish excavating the holotype. So in 1934, C.C. Young and MNBN found more bones. That includes parts of the shoulder and right humerus. Both skeletons now are at the Paleontological Museum of Uppsala University in Sweden. They've been on display since the 1930s. Euhelopus is one of the few sauropods known from an almost complete skull and jaw. Yeah, super cool. It is. Some of the teeth found were originally thought to belong to a mammal, but then later they were re-described as belonging to Euhelopus. 
<laughs> that shows you how small the teats were. <laughs> and it's crazy that something that was originally thought to be 50 feet long was thought to be a mammal, which at that time would be like at biggest the size of something like a badger. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of debate, too, over what type of sauropod Euhelopus is. It had the long neck and tail, a sloping back, and a proportionally small head. In 2010, Andreas Christian studied the head and neck of Euhelopus. The head and neck together weighed about 460 pounds or 210 kilograms, and the base of the neck to the snout was about 15 feet or 4.6 meters. The old base of neck to snout measurement. <laughs> yes. It's like adding just a little bit so that it's more than just the total neck length. Yep. He calculated the stresses the neck joints felt and found that Euhelopus probably kept its head up like a giraffe. Oh, that makes sense. If you're worried about the leverage on the neck, then yeah, you'd include the head if you can. Yeah, and that would have helped it eat medium and high up leaves. You also said that it had that longer front legs than hind legs, so it sort of gives it that inclined giraffe That's true. posture. <laughs> and its neck wasn't very flexible. It would have kept its neck at an angle between 40 and 50 degrees. Yeah, it's pretty high up. Yeah. And it would have taken less energy to keep its neck up to maintain its high blood pressure for eating leaves up high than walking around to find more food. It also had long neck ribs that helped it shift muscle mass further back towards the trunk. In the paper they wrote, quote, During a food shortage, raising the neck was probably even essential for surviving. It is better to get little than nothing at all, end quote. Very true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some other animals that lived around the same time and place as Euhelopus included stegosaurids. There are some indeterminate fossils found, fish, and reptiles. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.